Praise the Lord, the Lord name to be praised. We thank God for another day. You know, we're coming up to this weekend. You know, it's Passion Week. They call it Passion Week. But it's when the Lord was crucified for us. He came to Jerusalem and Palm Sunday a week before, and he came to take the bitter cup, and he was crucified. This is Resurrection Sunday, when the Lord raised from the dead victoriously. We thank God that he didn't stay in the grave, but he arose for the victory, the victory of the cross. We just thank God for the blood that prevailed, and he showed that we got the victory, and we are victor in Christ. Hallelujah. Welcome to Resurrection Sunday. Thanks be to God for the victory that give us that victory, that faith in Christ Jesus, to know that he died for us. He take the whooping that we couldn't take. He take the punishment that we couldn't bear. And he bear the cross, endure the cross, despite the spitting, the shame, and all of those things. He said it is finished. Our salvation is finished. Our faith is finished at Calvary. And now we come by faith in Jesus Christ. Let's go to the throne of grace. Today as you're sick, the blood of Jesus Christ still healing, still cleansing. The name of the Lord is a strong, strong tower and a confident in God to let you know that you can be healed, you can be saved, you can be delivered, you can be a Daniel, you can be a, a Moses, you can be a, a Isaiah, whosoever the Lord wants you to be. And the Lord wants you to do a great work in some of us life. But we're hanging on to sin too long. It's time to let go and let God. God can heal you. He want to heal you. And some people said, when God heal me, I'm going to do this. And Lord, if you heal me, and you heal, and you're still sitting down. Let's go to the throne of grace and make our petition to God today because he hears prayer. The weakest of prayer God will hear if it's from the depths of your soul. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for resurrection power. We thank you for resurrection day. We thank you, God, for Calvary. Lord, when you look into the bitter cup, Lord, Jesus, you didn't turn back. Thank you, Lord. We come with thanksgiving and praise to you, Lord, for what you've done and what you're about to do. Lord, we thank you for those today who will hear your word and will turn to you, Lord. We are praying for our country, Jesus. We are praying for a nation all around us, Lord, even our neighborhood. We are praying for them, Lord, that somebody today might turn to you with all their heart, somebody listening with all their mind and with all their soul and with all their strength. And stop playing church and turn to you with all their heart, Lord. Jesus, have mercy upon our police force. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Our leaders, Lord Jesus. Our CIA, Lord Jesus. Oh God, our governors and mayors, Lord Jesus. Help them, Lord, to repent that our country might be better, that things might change and soul might be saved. Oh God, and to be an example, God. Jesus, have mercy, God. Look upon our president, vice president, or, or all those in authority. And we thank you, God, for saving, for healing. Somebody today is sick and listening, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, somebody got us choke and crying out, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Hear our cry, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, have mercy. That liver problem, that liver transplant. Have mercy, Jesus. You can give them a new one, God. Give them the faith, lift their faith today to know that they can be saved, be healed in the name of Jesus, be delivered, be strength be healed just believe god that he was wounded he bear the cross he endured the cross he despised the shame and for our sins and our transgression and our healing be healed in the name of jesus there's power in this name there's power in the name of jesus be healed be delivered be strengthened in jesus name you want to praise him praise him for the victory praise him because god has given you the victory but sometimes we don't take it just praise God. We don't praise Him. We don't worship Him. We take prayer for granted. We're going to see what prayer can do. We're going to see what prayer did to Daniel. He was steadfast in the hope of Jesus Christ. Today we see Jesus. He didn't see Jesus, but he learned about Him in the Scripture because He's there from the beginning. So we're going to see how powerful prayer can be and the confidence that you can have in Christ. Today, I hope when you hear this message, your confidence and your faith will build up more. We're going to see Daniel in the lion's den and not eaten by Daniel. They were full and the, the, the jaw were locked by God. And the, the stomach was full. 
They didn't want no more meat. They think Daniel was a little cub, just born. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10. When Daniel knew that the document was signed, and we talk about Daniel and the lion's den, and the 120 leaders of Babylon, they signed a petition to King Darius that Daniel was praying. They tried to find faults with his work. They couldn't find any fault. So now they said, there is no man should ask a petition. They take the petition to the king that yet no man could ask petition of any gods anywhere in, within 30 days. And Daniel was found in his house praying. He was praying three times a day with his face turned to the Jerusalem. This man doesn't deserve to live. This man deserves to be in the lion's den. Can you imagine the cruel death that they have to face for the gospel's sake? Many believers were shown in the lion's den too. But there are some things we don't understand. But when we see Jesus, we'll understand it better by and by. Now Daniel was shown in the lion's den. Hear what the Bible says. Now when, Dan, when Darius knew that the document of the accusation of Daniel, when he heard about it, he actually fainted and went to his house. Where he had Daniel went to his house in upper chamber and opened his window toward Jerusalem and got down on his knees three times a day and pray. He prayed to his God, the great and mighty God. And then these men came by assignment to the king, to Daniel. They came by assignment and found Daniel. They came to him and found him praying. You know, they came by assignment. They know what time he pray at, at the day and in the evening. So they all gather together and make a big assignment to come to Daniel. But when they come, they find him praying in his office, in his, in his upper chamber. The Bible said he was in his upper chamber praying because he was over all the province of Babylon. He was next to the king. So he could do, go into his chamber and pray. And nobody could tell him no. The king would be deeply appreciated to come and find him praying because they talk about Daniel God. He delivered and they know that Daniel prayed. They know. So they came by a sign and they came suddenly upon Daniel and, and they find him praying. So they go to the king and said, Oh, king, we are at the 11th or the 12th verse. He said, Oh, king, did you not sign? This injunction that anyone find praying or asking any petition within 30 days will be turning the lion's den. The king said, Yes. And he said, King, O oh king, the laws of the Medes and the Persian cannot be altered. The king said, Yes. He said, Well, this Daniel, this Daniel. Then the king said, Verse 14. Then the king, when he heard these words, was much distress. It was perplexed. And said, what should I do? Daniel was my love. Then he called Daniel and said, Daniel, I've signed the petition for you to join the lions then. But the God that you serve, he should be able to deliver you. And I'm not happy about it. I'm greatly distressed. Then verse 16, then the king commanded Daniel was brought to brought and cast into the lion's den. The king declared to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually deliver you. Verse 17, and a stone was brought and laid at the mouth, a great stone. Again, you know how many tons that Daniel can't move was brought and put to the mouth of the lion's den. That means Daniel cannot move that. And Daniel was shown, you know, they have to climb up high to put Daniel down because they can't open it, the gate. So they have to climb on something, on a ladder or something, to throw Daniel in there. And he did not fight. He did not resist. And he knows that he's not going to disappoint them by fighting back. Sometimes we fight the good fight of faith. But 
You know, when Daniel prays, God show him how to fight the good fight of faith. You don't have to go fight as a strong man. You can fight 120 people. You can fight the laws of the king of the Mede and the Persian. So you have to just let it go and put it in the hands of God. God, you can, Daniel, go to his knees and say, Lord, I can't fix this plan against me. I can't solve it, Lord. I don't know what to do. I can't work it out, Lord. I put it in your hands. So he fall to his knee and pray before he go to the lion's den. He already persecuted, so he continued praying, going to the lion's den. And, and then the king, and then the king, in verse 17, and he, a stone was brought to the, to the mouth of the lion's den. Then the king went to his place, his palace, fasting. Now this king going to fast. He don't know how to fast, but he learned to fast. When trouble come, you want to call upon God, even if you don't know him, say there's a God somewhere. The heavens declare the glory of God. Psalm 19. And the firmament showed his handiwork. Who can change night into day or day into night? Who can make the sun to shine? Who can make the rain to fall? There must be a God. Because they haven't declared it. So the king said, there's a God. All of a sudden. And Daniel prays. And God hands a prayer. And God gives him interpretation. And he's a man of God. But I'm deeply perplexed that Daniel, whom I love, after being the lion's den, eaten by lions, so he, he passed the night fasting and brought to him and, 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 uh, and his sleep. Fasting and his sleep was taken from him. It was really perplexed. If he was fasting, he didn't have his wine and his dine as he used to be. He didn't want no food. A half of thing like that. Who's going to take the place of Daniel when he's gone? So he fasted and prayed all night. And as the day dawned, what did he do? Then at the break of day, verse 19, the king arose and went in haste early in the morning to the lion's den. Verse 20, and as he came to near to the den of the lion, he said, Daniel, did the God that you serve able to deliver you? He said, how king live forever? The Lord deliver me. He looked down from heaven and delivered me. And what happened? He said, the living God that I serve, deliver me. Then Daniel said to the king, O oh, king, live forever. My God sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth who have not, they have not harmed me. He sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth. They lock the teeth and take away the power. And the, and the king had a, set a ladder in there and had a Daniel to come out the lion's den. Oh my God, and look what happened after that. Then King Darius wrote to all the people and nation and, and in language and king that dwell in the earth, peace be multiplied to you and make a decree that in all the royal the, the main people are do tremble and fear of the name of Daniel God. And for that, the king ordered, the king ordered that all that conspire against Daniel, can you imagine it was 120, and all the homes, and all the children, and all their belongings must be destroyed by fire. And they, this, all those souls of the kid, even the babies, everyone in the home, they're going to be in the lion's den for feeding for the lion. They eat and eat, and all bones laid at the hand of the den of the lion. We should not conspire against the people of God. Because the name of the Lord is a strong confidence. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run it into it and be saved. Even if they have killed da Dan Daniel, the king would still kill them because they have no right to destroy Daniel. We should not persecute. The Bible tells us about persecution. 
but be of good courage. He said, I'll be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm that friend that stick closer than a brother. I mean, somebody tell you, I'm going to be with you. But when trouble come and you need help, they're not there. They're not there for you. But Jesus said, though thousands have come between that same minute, though millions have come, there's room for you. God shined his favor upon Daniel. Daniel was highly favored of God. This is our child of God. When they turn from sin and turn to God with all their heart, you're highly favored. Sometimes you don't feel favored. You're going to be persecuted on the job for righteousness sake. You're going to be hated sometimes. But God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. God never allowed Daniel to die. Because you have much more work for him to do. And we see what's going to take place. The vision. The vision that what Daniel get from God. The dreams and the vision from Daniel from, from the first part of Daniel. And Daniel going to get his own vision from God now. God going to use him mightily to start the, whatever taking place in Daniel 7 to 8 to 9 to the end, fulfilled in the book of Revelation. No weapon is formed against you going to prosper. And all those lying tongues that come against him, the Lord shall condemn. This is the heritage of them that fear God. Of them that walk in confidence with God. The fear of the Lord is a strong confidence. So the fear, when you walk in fear of this world, you, you just walk not sure of what's going to happen. You fear, you know, some people don't know what they fear. They don't know what they fear, but they just fear. Christians still fear today. The fear of noise, the fear of living alone. The devil will put fear on you. The devil will put the spirit of fear on you. But you have to learn to know that God, he said he will never leave you. The God of Daniel, the God that delivered Daniel, is able to deliver you. You see, when you come to Jesus Christ and you give your life to him, you are dead to sin. You're going to sin. You're going to come short. But you learn to repent. But when you come to God, you know, you know it's like a burden taken off of you. You know, when you come to God, you turn from sin with all your heart, with all your mind. You are dead to the things of this world and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Things are not going to happen overnight. You're not going to be delivered from fear overnight. But as you grow in God, as you start to read the word, as you start to see the privilege that you have in prayer, as you start to see the privilege that you have from God, and when you cry to God, he deliver you. He delivered me from fear. I was greatly feared as a young Christian too. I don't even know what I fear, but I fear. I fear in the night season, the devil come and give you bad dreams and bad visions. And if you get having some bad vision, go to God and cast out the spirit of fear and ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, ask him to refill you. We are like dirty dishes, needed to wash in the blood of the Lamb every day. You know, we are like dirt. We, you know, the world, you know, convince us to even say things sometimes and do things we shouldn't do. We have to go to God, ask him to wash us and cleanse us and renew us and refill us. And this day, when we see what the Lord has done for us at Calvary, the beating what he take, and Calvary, the nails, the great big nails that drive to his feet, it's right in the nerves where it's hurt more, in the palm of his hands, where the nerves is. That's where they drive the nail, right in the palm here. And... He couldn't, he couldn't, he, he don't know what to do to heal that pain. Blood was streaming down from every side. And they pluck out his beard. Blood was screaming down from his beard. Everywhere, the crown of thorn, and gnaw him in his head. Terrible things that Jesus go to for us. And he speak hours of, of agony on the cross. Hours and hours of agony. Could one man love the world so much that he would give his life? There's no blood that was so good that could shed for this world but the blood of the innocent Lamb of God. 
You see what Jesus had done for us. And Daniel is a man of prayer, as I talked before. Some time of the day, get yourself alone with Christ. Even if it's in the restroom, say a little word of prayer to him, of thanksgiving and praise. If you can't pray, you start thanking for the blood. Thank him for saving you. Thank him for delivering you from hell. Thank him for the hope of eternal life. Just to have hope of eternal life. To know when you die, you don't have to go down to hell forever. Torment forever and ever. I mean, I wanted to let somebody know that if you're tormented in hell forever and ever, there's no hope. You can call upon God forever. That's why God gave Belshazzar time to repent. And all those Kings that worship God of wood and stone. He gave them time to repent. God is merciful and full of compassion. He gives you time to repent. How many times some people hear the word of God? You're going to church. You're still going to fornication. It's wrong. You're not going to enter heaven with that. No sin. God is holy. You can't be living with your companion not married. And then you're raising children in that condition. They are going to come under the same thing if you don't change and, and show your children the way. Teach them the way. Teach them how to honor the mother and father. Teach them the Ten Commandments, how to live holy, how to turn from sin. Some of them don't know. That's why some of these kids are so destroyed. They don't know who they are. Confused gender. They want to change. And when they change, they're more confused. Because God makes you a man and a woman. You know, beautiful men and, and women, handsome men, change themselves, change their sex. And now they are miserable. They want to return back to who they are. God will let you know you should return to who you are. Don't change. Don't go and take that surgery. Don't go and take yourself into a drug queen, queen a drama queen, whatever you are. There's no such thing in the Bible. The Bible says, if any man being Christ is a new creature, you don't do these things anymore. Too much homosexual in the church today. It's time for you to change. Repent of your sin because tomorrow is not promised. Too much lesbian in the church today, walking around, say you're a preacher. You're lying wonder. It's time to return. It's time to turn to God with all your heart. Jesus loves you and he is not willing that any should go to hell. That's why so many people sick so long and can't be healed because you're mixing this thing. God don't mix and mingle. Is that you're free? Is that you're saved? Are you lost? Where are you? Where are you going to spend eternity? Today, if you hear his voice, hard, not your heart. Jesus loves you so much. If you and I were the only sinner, I would have gone to the cross still. He would have bared the suffering for us. Can nobody love you the way Jesus would love you and show his love towards us? The woman at the well, when she hear the, the word of God, some people never hear the word of God, and God knows all about it. Jesus knows all about it. In John chapter 4, when a prostitute, Jesus saw that woman at the well, he see the heart that she will change. He see her heart. He have in her name written in the Lamb Book of Life. And when he tell him that I am Jesus, he said, oh my God, I want to know more about it. I got to go tell my friends. She was a prostitute, but immediately the Lord used her mightily. And she turned her heart to God. And many Samaritans come to know Jesus through that woman. Now, if you today, you might not be a prostitute, but you're a sinner. You need to be saved by the grace of God and know that you're saved. And when you say, when you are born again, when you turn your life over to Jesus and repent and say, Lord, I didn't know all of this thing that Jesus got you so much from me and he suffered so much from me. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to have the hope of eternal life. Come into my heart, Lord. Let me to know that I have eternal life. You can turn to God. Daniel turned to God in the distress. David said, in my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. Sometimes you cry to the Lord, and you believe the Lord don't hear you. It's because your faith is put into the test. You know what kind of faith you have if it doesn't work? Your faith has to work for you. And when you put you the test, when Daniel goes through all of those tests, he come out a better person. Because, you know, he he been... He'd been tried, he'd been tempted like a pure gold, tried in the oven, tried in fire, and come out like a pure gold. Daniel's faith put to the test. Our faith is going to put to the test. But remember, God is merciful. He's not going to give you more than you can bear. He knows how much we can bear. 
So when you're going through pain and sometimes hungry, or somebody d divorce you or deceive you or steal from you or take away everything you got, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean at your own understanding. Forgive those who trespass against you. Because you can go to hell for unforgiveness too. If you don't forgive those who trespass against you. Jesus forgives the wickedness of sinner that crucify him. He looked down from heaven and said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they have done. We know not what they have done. We were so involved in sin that we don't know how much Jesus loves us. But now that you know, now that you hear the word of God, it's time to turn from sin. It's time to turn and say, Jesus, I, I don't want this life anymore. I want to change. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Cry to him with all your heart. And he will fill you with the Holy Spirit. Do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit today? A lot of Christians say they don't know whether they're filled with the Holy Spirit or not. When you come to Jesus and, he, and you accept him as Savior and Lord, the Holy Spirit come and take an abode in you. Sometimes people speak in tongues, sometimes they don't. But it's like fire. You know, you, you, got, you got fire in the stove, but you don't turn it on. And when you turn it on, it gets hot. It's the more you use it to get hot and can cook. So today, turn it on to turn on Jesus in you. Turn on the Holy Spirit in you. And say, Lord Jesus, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Use me for your glory. I want to use for your glory. God have a plan for your life. He have a plan for every life. That's why we never die in sin when the devil come to get us. That's why you never die when you was in a coma. God have a plan for your life. Ask him in today. He's knocking on your heart's door. He's standing at your heart's door right now and knock. Will his pleading be in vain? No. Jesus, come into my heart, Lord. I've seen the life of Daniel. I've seen how Daniel been faithful to God. I see Daniel lift his faith to God. Even in that lion's den, he passed the night praying in the lion's den. If somebody said to you, I'm going to throw you in the lion's den, what would you do? You're going to give up? You can't give up now. God bring you too far. You can't give up. Let him in today. Let the Holy Ghost have free course. Let God have his way in your life. And today, if you have Jesus into your life, one day I'm going to see you. I'm going to see you when the mist have rolled away from our eyes. When Jesus, when we see Jesus, what a glorious time would be at the marriage feast. Some of us never have a marriage feast here, but you're going to have a marriage feast one day with Jesus. You're going to see Jesus one day. Ask him in today. And let the peace of God. Jesus, when Jesus leave, his disciples say, peace I leave with you. Peace I give with you. Only Jesus can give you that peace that you long for, that you're searching for. Ask him in today. And let him in. And go to the word of God. Go to the book of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Don't go to Revelation yet. You will be confused. And don't go to Matthew too much. Because of the genealogy there. Just go to Mark, John, Luke, and then go to Matthew. And then you'll know who Jesus is and where he come from. God bless you. And I hope to see you in heaven one day. Have a wonderful day. Love you. Thank you, Pastor Carter.